So power zone has to do with proximity. Your classroom arrangement has a lot to do with whether or not you are able to be in the power zone. And we'll talk more about that um, as we go through our activity today. So we have another clip to get you ready for this. Power of proximity. <laughs> well, we do. <laughs> yeah? It's us. Oh, uh, come on up. So, Elaine, you don't have a problem with her, do you? We adore Elaine. She wants to say hi. She's with her new boyfriend. What's he like? He's nice. Bit of a close talker. A what? You'll see. <laughs> Boy, I really had no idea that you felt this way about the Costanzas. They're exhausting. It's like being in an asylum. <laughs> hey! This is Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Hello. Hello, Aaron. So how long are you folks in town? Oh, <laughs> three more days. Three more days, and then we're off to Paris. Ah, we're going with the select charter group. I love France. I was just there last year. In fact, <laughs> you know, I still have an envelope full of French francs. I'll give them to you. Oh, well, we can't take money. Oh, no. It's a gift from us. Oh, that is so nice, Aaron. <laughs> Isn't he nice? Mm -hmm. So listen, has Jerry been showing you a good time? No, I haven't. <laughs> you know, I, I have a friend who works at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. How'd you like a behind the scenes tour? Really? You could do that? Easily. It wouldn't be any trouble? Of course not. When do you go? How about right now? I'm ready. Are you sure? Yes. OK, let me get my coat. Elaine, what do you say? Well, well I don't think so, Aaron. Uh, I have plans. Oh. How about you, Jerry? <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you sure? You can examine the artwork up close. Maybe I'll try and catch up with you. Oh, no, that'll happen. All right. We're off. OK. Bye. Let's go. OK, bye-bye. Have a good time. Bye. See everybody later. OK. Bye. Proximity is important, right? <laughs> we, want you to be, we don't want you to be that close to your kids. That's not the wild way. But we want you to be near them. So if you look in the middle of your tables, there's a white sheet. It looks like it's white to you, but it's actually has something on the other side. If you'll turn that over. Now, when you look at the power zone section of Fundamental five, you'll find different representations of classroom arrangements uh, and regarding where should we be? How should we arrange our desks? How should we arrange our students? Where should we ourselves be? And that's something that we should be thinking about as teachers because we put so much time and energy into planning these wonderful, valuable lessons that are rich with, you know, standard based engagement and rigor. But then if we're not working in the power zone, then we're missing an important component of delivery of that information. Does that make sense? So when you look at your handout, six groups have representations of classroom setups and two groups have different specific instructions, which will come target your groups in just a moment. When you look at your handout, the green box represents the teacher desk. The blue boxes represent the students, okay? Kramer represents the position of the teacher in the room, okay? What we're gonna ask you to do, if you have one of the handouts that has a classroom set up, we want you to just talk at your tables about the positive or negative aspects of that teacher being in that place. Now, we understand, guys, that you're not going to physically stand in the same box the entire class period. But if you were to stand in that vicinity for 45 minutes, so to speak, back and forth, you know, if we would go speak to a kid and then kind of land in that same area for the majority of a class period, would that be a good thing or a bad thing, and why? We constantly have to go. I'm busy. Well, that's So he needs to be going. He needs to be right here, and then he needs to be moving from here to here, not just there, because he needs to leave these kids out. I was thinking too. He could be. I like the fact that he's here, but he's better off here, so that he's coming up. Yeah. For maybe a test day mm -hmm. or something like that. Uh, the uh, the cons obviously are you can't get to the back row easily or can't get 
uh, to individual students easily. Uh, it's not good for small groups. Uh, you can't engage with individual students. Gamers behind his desk, we've got two desks there with the teacher. Two students, I should say. So like group one, he's behind the desk, he has, has his barrier. Um, he's in his, we call it a safe zone instead of a power zone. Um, and he, he's moved two chair, or two desks over. So, so I guess one positive would be that he could have proximity for uh, maybe some of the troubled students. Um, and, uh, but unfortunately, the ones in the far back are going to still have, um, are going to be unmonitored and left to their own, you know, whatever they're doing. So, um, the uh, another advantage would be that you know because the desk, teacher desk does have a lot of um, tools that he would need, like the computer or the doc cam. Um, he has access to that or, or those things. Let's talk about this one for a minute because. I know I'm probably supposed to be impartial, but I'm human. This is my favorite. Let me tell you why. I'm an English teacher. We do writing conferences a lot, okay? I want you to reframe this for a moment if you saw this as negative. When I first started teaching 12 years ago, especially when I was in school, there was a stigma that if a kid was at the teacher's desk, that kid was probably in trouble, right? That's not the way it is now. And I want you to hear me when I say this, because I'm one of you, remember? If an administrator walks into your room, and you're sitting at your desk, and you're conferencing with a kid in an engaging conversation about their work that is meaningful, that's a good thing, okay? It's a good thing. And I want us to get out of the mindset that having kids at our desk is negative, because when we are here with our kids, we are building meaningful relationships and we are having conversations that will guide their achievement for the rest of the year. It will promote a positive culture and climate in our classroom that will bleed into our hallways when they walk out of our doors every single day. And those two or three minutes that you share on an individual basis with your kids can be the defining factor in their success. Okay? And I want you to remember that because that's really important. Now, classroom management is a big deal when you're set up this way because you need to have already set a protocol in your classroom that these kids have earned trust and respect in you and your classroom environment that they know that when you're seated and you're discussing something with a the kid, they are on task and they are not interrupting you unless it's an emergency, right? So this is a process. This is something you have to work on. You have to practice it. These procedures have to be practiced. Okay guys, we're gonna talk today about what's gonna happen with you when I'm conferencing with a kid. And we're gonna talk about how you're going to request a conference with me. And we're gonna talk about what that's gonna look like if somebody else walks into the room. And we're gonna talk about how long you have with me each day that we are able to conference. Those are protocols, they are procedures. And you know just as well as I do that if we have good procedures in our classroom, we don't even need rules. Because if our kids are engaged, they're not going to be discipline problems, right? Okay, so I just want you to, I want you to consider this because that is where the magic happens. And in the book, this is a power zone, okay? So can you just consider it? And if you need our help incorporating this and making it work for you, that's our job, we will come and help you, okay? If one is going to expend considerable time and energy to plan a lesson, if one is going to expend considerable time and energy to teach the lesson, if one is going to expend considerable time and energy to assess the lesson, and ultimately if one is evaluated on the effectiveness of the lesson, which we are, right? Why wouldn't one position oneself in the location that will produce the best results?